Okay. Uh, my name is Jack Barokat. I'm from Tel Aviv University. I would like to start by thanking Olaf, Rudiger, all the organizers for giving me the opportunity to address you in this important summit. And I'm also glad to meet old friends from the early times of Matterhorn, later Opencast, like Olaf, Rudiger, Vicente, who is not here, Tobias. Uh, we used to work together at the beginning of this um, uh, wonderful project. Uh, what I would like to do in half an hour or so, right? Half an hour? Uh, to introduce you a uh, use case, uh, a change of paradigm concept that we are trying to implement at Tel Aviv University. Uh, I will start by uh, giving a brief uh, description of what we are doing until now and then what are the pain points of what we are doing so far and how we would like to change uh, the approach to uh, recording the recordings that we are doing. Okay, I have a new uh, mouse which has a G sensor, so I will try to use it here. Uh, the best benefit of this that we can record the screen and also the, power po uh, the, power the mouse pointing which is something that we cannot do with usual uh, laser uh, uh, beam. So we initiated the uh, video recording uh, process around 2002. We started with Windows, uh, uh, with Microsoft uh, uh, Windows Media Server. It was the leading um, um, way of doing things by that time. Since then, we changed a few um, servers and finally we are working at this moment with Woza for maybe three or four years. Um, the way that we do the recording, actually we were trying to um, make the usual uh, classroom into sort of uh, recording studio. Uh, we take the audio, PowerPoint presentation and video and combine them all together to one single uh, video file. And we do this by sending to the classrooms a student who is trained to do these recordings. As you can see at the bottom of this uh, slide, this is a guy, a student, on his way to making a recording. He's holding a tripod. And on his back, back you can see a back which includes the following uh, regular computer, camera, a audio transmitter receiver, uh, some dongle or adapter from HDMI to USB 3. And all, all he has to do is to go to the classroom, assemble this equipment. He has 10 minutes for this purpose. If he is well trained, he can do it easily and start doing the recording. So we have a good recording of uh, a few levels, layers of video, the main layer of the uh, professor, and then the PowerPoint presentation, branding, or so on. I will uh, talk about it later. Uh, the set is uh, quite easy to assemble, and we use uh, in-house made uh, um, uh, online editing software which combines all the layers of the video by the time that the recording is performed. And everything is published also in in-house build uh, Joomla-based video portal, and this way we make them accessible to the students. Okay, so what are the pain points of this approach? Why we would like to change it? To begin with, we have high dependency on human resources, a long training period of the students to perform do the recordings. Actually, it's about one or two weeks, and by that time, they cannot do the job alone. Uh, frequently changing of the staff, usually they work for one semester or two semester, and we need to train them again and again, the new people. We have a lot of operational failures due to the uh, human uh, factor and malfunctions. And also there are problems with assembling and disassembling this equipment and moving it from one location to another location. We have a lot of problems with uh, uh, connections broken, sometimes even cameras and, and laptops uh, tending to fall and break and so on. And of course we have limited uh, production rate. Uh, of course, we have also high uh, depreciation of the uh, equipment. All these together bring about operas high operational cost and low redundancy. 
So how we are going to deal with this on our new, new approach? What we would like to do is to take all the resources that we have in the classroom and move it to the central location instead of sending the uh, uh, recording person with all the gear to the classroom. And this is now available due uh, better internet, better uh, network connection, uh, better uh, um, compressing algorithms and so on. So how to do it? We take the video and the audio from the classrooms by a s RTSP stream, uh, which is actually a audio and video integrated in one HDMI um, uh, stream. And then we take the lecturer's PPT using or desktop NDI desktop capture agent. If I will have enough time, I can show you how we can use vMix or OBS online editing softwares, connecting all these sources together and combining in a single uh, frame. Uh, and of course, uh, we can use this real-time editing software to live webcast the uh, recording to another satellite rooms or inside the university or outside the, the university. Actually, if we have all the technology and, and infrastructure to take all the resources in the classroom and to move it to central location, uh, maybe it's now the right time to, sh to ask if uh, the capture agent is useless anymore or it needs to be relocated. Uh, we talked about it uh, yesterday a little bit. So I will put in a diagram everything that I already talked on the previous uh, slide. This is the classroom. In the classroom, we, we have PTZ camera connected to the network. We have laptop computer or any other computer of the lecturer, and we have the audio system. What we do is we take the audio output, record output of the mixer, analog output, we put it into the camera lining of the camera, and this is uh, sent by RTSP or RTMP stream to the central location. The uh, latency is incredibly low. I mean, it's around uh, three, four, five hundred milliseconds, which is highly noticeable. And uh, the NDI technology is also able to uh, transfer everything that's happening on the desktop of the lecturer, even full frame uh, HD video, including audio, can be transferred to another location with very, very low latency, even lower than the camera. Everything is uh, connected in one central location. It is in our department. Our department is uh, audiovisual department of Tel Aviv University, and it is under the IT unit of the university. And we use all these online editing softwares to process all these streams and combine them in a single uh, video frame, video file. Uh, it, this is not a, a media package. And of course, this then uploaded to our uh, video portal uh, with all the management access rights and everything, and also it's uh, automatically available on the Moodle. You can just go in the Moodle, choose your course, available videos, and it's automatically uh, generated code which embed the video inside the Moodle uh, course. Okay, so some animation have everything uh, was before and it's going to be now. This is a classroom. This is the same student who came to the classroom, uh, put the camera on the top of the uh, tripod, then he connects it to the uh, laptop computer using Magwell uh, HDMI to USB 3, then the laptop, laptop connected to the uh, network, getting instance of the lecture computer, and everything is live webcasted. Of course, we have also the audio connection to the uh, um, uh, lecturer and the system. And we are going to change everything uh, in a way that we don't need any more all the uh, equipment in the classroom. What the only thing that we have is a stable uh, positioned camera at the back of the room. It is a PTZ camera. I will later on give you some details about the camera. And this camera is transmitting the audio and video to our uh, center. In the center, we have a large uh, LCD uh, screen, 70 inches. We can monitor all the active cameras 
And of course, editing computer is connected to all the stream, uh, either video of the lecturer or desktop. And you can see here, no, sorry, uh, you can see here the uh, editing software. In this case, this is Vimix. Have you any of you used or heard of uh, Vimix? Okay, it's uh, unbelievably a uh, perfect uh, software with limitless uh, properties. I can maybe talk about it later if I have some time. And now this is two screens uh, connected to the same computer. Uh, you can see here on the left, it is a Vimix software, uh, a lot of resources, and at the end is uh, the program of the uh, 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 software, which is the actually recorded frame. On the right side, you can see two instances of OBS, and in each instance, you can see the video and the NDI uh, uh, brought, uh, the, the uh, PowerPoint presentation or desktop brought by the NDI. The both softwares are able to live webcast either to YouTube, to, to Facebook, or our local uh, custom uh, uh, streaming server, which is Woza. The only thing that uh, Vimix is better, uh, to begin with, it's, it's not a free software. The uh, license costs from six euro up to 700 euros, depending which features you like. The, uh, we, will, we need the 700 euros uh, a license because this license has PTZ control over the camera. So using this uh, license of Vmix, we can also uh, have PTZ controls and we have also presets for each uh, uh, format that we, or, or layout that we would like to use. And of course has a very enhanced uh, video uh, uh, modification uh, uh, properties like controlling of the brightness, uh, white balance, constant, uh, RGB, and everything can be done as also very good uh, mixer for the audio. And the computer that are manipulating all these three streams or even more instances at the same time is working with quite low um, CPU use. It's around 40% uh, of CPU, so it is able handling easily all these things. The one of the purposes of the pilot or project or POC that we did is was to define how, how much of workload we can put on a single uh, editor recorder and uh, um, three was quite easy. Uh, we can, uh, uh, later I will show in some layouts, it doesn't uh, need any take care at all. Okay, this is the picture that the guy who is operating the system, the three instances running at the moment, uh, you can see it here. And this is the installation of some uh, cameras at the back of the uh, lecture halls. We don't have fancy <laughs> halls like this. <laughs> it's uh, not that fancy, but uh, you can see here at the back side, we have a box inside the box with this uh, glass door, a camera, the same is here and here. Uh, I can just tell you that we made some simple mistakes. For example, we ordered this uh, box white inside and outside, and it turned out to be when it is white inside, the camera is too much visible, and also there is a light reflection that comes out on the glass, so we needed to, pay them, uh, to paint them black inside. So things that you learn while you do things. Okay, this is the, uh, the big uh, uh, LCD screen that we monitor the recordings. Let me see if I can operate this by almost. <laughs> yeah, I succeed. You can see the, uh, all the moving images. So, Let's try to see what are the pros and the cons of this uh, new uh, concept. Uh, we have large scalability and we can make a lot of parallel uh, lectures, uh, recording, lower dependency of human resources. What happened here, instead of one uh, uh, recorder takes, uh, let's say five minutes or sometimes 10 minutes walk from our center to the location of the recording and then 10 minutes more to set up his gear. 
make the recordings, disassemble the gear and come back, now we can save all this time and instead of recording one uh, uh, lecture, he can record three or four lectures simultaneously. So we have a better uh, human resources uh, utilization, low depreciation, the uh, gear doesn't move much, uh, lower failure rates because we can check everything beforehand and you don't discover at the moment that you come to assemble the gear that something is not working, something is broken, uh, things like this. Uh, we have this way major step towards completely autonomous recording because from here uh, to, to make some sort of scheduling that initiate automatically at giving time the lecture and then uh, put the uh, record in some drop folder that will be uploaded automatically. Uh, it's a lot of way to go, but we are much closer than we were before. And uh, the I will show you later the tracking of the camera we choose is quite good. We can actually uh, record uh, classes where the uh, lecturer using Blackboard without attention at all. Uh, and also we can support wide range of recording qualities. What I mean is that you can do some boutique recording, a dedicated one recorder to one classroom, manually uh, moving the camera, adjusting everything for the high quality recording, and up to something that you just initiate and forget it, if it is two streams that we can put them side by side. Uh, we have high quality video uh, monitoring, which means that we can see in real time exactly things as they are recorded. The video quality, audio quality, uh, color, brightness, everything, we can watch it real time, and if something needs to be taken care of, we can do it online in real time. And all this is less than 2,000 euro per room. I mean, we don't need any uh, dedicated hardware. All the hardware is standard hardware. Uh, later on, we can use also NDI for the camera, but th at that stage, I prefer to do it with RTSP or RTMP because I am not connected to any vendor. I'm, I can change the camera uh, whenever I like, and I don't need to pay some licensing as long as it is RTSP or RTMP, and I am able to connect to the camera with using these protocols, so I am free to choose any camera and upgrade any part of this system whenever I like. I mean, it is standard computers, standard operating systems, everything can be initially upgraded. Cons, well, I don't see much. Maybe you can help me to find some uh, <laughs> cons on this uh, uh, approach. We have high network dependency. In case of happen some network failure, we are losing content. To avoid this, I'm in contact with the company that's providing the uh, cameras. We would like to have SD card inside the camera, which make cycling recording, let's say, of 12 hours. If something happens, we can retrieve this information from inside the camera. It could be a good solution. So some statistics from the pilot. We run this pilot for a whole semester. It is not fully production. We did also some recordings in the old way, but in this way we recorded 21 uh, courses and uh, we live webcasted 160 hours to satellite classes inside the university. The need for this is very obvious. We have some courses with 500, 600 students and we don't have enough classrooms at this scale, so what we do is we tell the students that the lecture will be also live webcasted to another classroom nearby so they can uh, split in two groups. We also did this sort of uh, live webcast to uh, affiliated hospitals that we have all around Israel at the north, at the south, and we can run classes that uh, take place in t at Tel Aviv University and medical doctors can attend these courses remotely from uh, their hospitals without need traveling. And total hours that we recorded during this uh, POC, proof of concept of pilot, whatever you would like to call it, is one, uh, it's 752 hours. And in some of the hours we try to check the overload to the recording students and we initiated three uh, or four uh, recordings simultaneously. 
and it worked well in terms of hardware and human resources. Uh, let's go to some sample recordings, but for this I need to extend my screen, otherwise it somehow doesn't work well in this computer. <coughs> or maybe I do the presenter view, let me see. Okay, let me see if it works. Um. ולכן השאלה שקולה, אני עוד לא גוזר אותה, אבל עוד מעט אני אגזור, כן? אז השאלה השקולה, הש... זה הוכיחו כי לפונקציה... ולכן השאלה שקולה, אני עוד לא גוזר אותה, אבל עוד מעט אני אגזור, כן? השאלה השקולה, את הדברים האלו. כאן אנחנו רואים בעצם את הדברים האלו. I don't know if the problem is with my computer or something else, but let me see. Okay, I will do it in five minutes. <laughs> okay, anyway, just regard this <laughs> uh, video, it's because of uh, the connection my computer, it... It displays זה okay, הוכיחו anyway, כי uh, לפונקציה. You need to believe me that the tracking is working okay. Something is not working with this display, but uh, instead maybe I will go and show you uh, the Vmix uh, integ uh, NDI integration and mix like this. Maybe it can be more useful. Um, let me show you uh, Vmix. Uh, I have I already connected now with VPN to my uh, computer or oh, we need to duplicate the screen again okay this is the vmix inter interface uh, one of the software that we use for uh, capturing or getting the resources from the classrooms um, we can add inputs, for example, if I would like to connect some camera which is in a remote classroom, we choose the uh, one of the streams, and then we have the camera. If I would like to control this camera, I go to the PTZ uh, section of this and uh, choose the uh, right protocol and then uh, the right IP.
Okay, and now I can gain control to the camera. I can move it. Uh, I can zoom in, zoom out, and everything it's done inside the editing software. As you can see, there is very low latency. Just take a bear in mind that we have the mechanical movement of the lenses and the camera, and we have both way go and back, and it is working quite why, uh, well. And we can have this as presets. And now I will show you how to uh, capture the uh, desktop NDI. So I have uh, NDI resources. And uh, here is the desktop of the lecturer. I can manipulate it to any size that I would like to have it. For example, I want to make it shorter. I want to crop it from left and right. I, I would like to position it on the right side of the frame, and all I have to do is now edit as additional layer to the video. Of course, I can choose some image to put at the bottom side of the, uh, uh, let me see if I have some image to put it as a banner. Okay, then I can put also the banner as additional uh, layer on the top of this. So we have a complete layout that we would like recorded. And if we would like to uh, uh, webcast it to uh, some another location, uh, we can choose a custom RTMP server or, or uh, Facebook or YouTube, YouTube. And the most important thing, vMix itself has NDI agent, so I can use uh, another computer to view the, any of the resources of uh, vMix, either program or preview or any resource as NDI on other computers. So if I have a lot of vMix running like this and I want to monitor it, I can use another computer and connect to each of these vMix instances and uh, grab the uh, relevant uh, output of vMix. Uh, I could show you the OBS doing the same. What is the time? I have a few more minutes. Two. Wow. <laughs> okay, we can do the same things with OBS. It is open uh, uh, source software. If my computer doesn't disappoint me, I will try to show you also. Uh, this is the OBS uh, software. You see the same uh, uh, room, but the thing is that uh, this current camera doesn't have uh, interface for OBS to um, manage the PTZ. Uh, they, will, they released already some of the companies like PTZ Optics uh, plugin for OBS so we can control the camera also inside the OBS. But uh, you, you do pretty much the same things you have since I don't have much time, I will do it uh, very briefly. You have an audio mixer. You have different level of resources. Here the uh, approach is a little bit different. You can move each resource to upper level and then it goes as external uh, level. You, you can choose your resource and resize it on site and you can put different layers of video and then you move it from the preview to the program and then you make the recording, you make the live webcast, whatever you like. Okay, now I will give you some room for questions if you have any. Yes. Hold on a second, Steve. Uh, thanks. W what are the operators actually doing while they're recording? Like, why, um, why isn't it fully automated? Actually, not much. They initiate the recording. If the camera is in the auto tracking mode, not much. But if we would like to get a really uh, close look of the lecturer, then we rather uh, manipulate the camera manually so he can use the PTZ optics by uh, arrows and move the camera so he can track more precisely the lecturer. And of course, after the recording is done, he is in charge of uploading to our uh, video management system of the lecture. Hold on. Hold on. When you're uh, streaming uh, lectures to other classrooms, do you have any kind of uh, interaction back from the other classrooms? Can they ask questions or anything like that? Uh, a good question. It is not feasible this way because we have a latency of around half a second. 
what we do now is we are developing a uh, hybrid use of Zoom and vMix in a way that uh, Zoom can be, uh, Zoom is uh, uh, supporting NDI. Zoom, uh, the vMix can be input of the Zoom and to the vMix we don't have any latency, we put it on Zoom and we use the Zoom software or any other video conferencing software with the where we need the, this interaction. Uh, do you have an integration to OpenCast either scheduling or up upload? No, um, I, I think there is I API for all these softwares. It w it can be done. W we can you you can make <coughs> profiles in which profile you can define uh, the single instance or OBS or vMix to what resources is connected and maybe you can initiate it using API. We would li actually the secret purpose of being in my being in this forum today is trying maybe to make a task force with some developers that would like to develop a scheduler who is addressing directly to the class resources not going through a uh, capture agent. So maybe we can do in one of the uh, upcoming releases of OpenCast uh, to make a, a scheduler that can directly connect a camera, a, a desktop, and the layout, and everything can be defined inside the a scheduler for, uh, for this sort of uh, recordings. Okay. Um, yep. <laughs> no problem. What about uh, professors bringing their own laptops? Um, we can ask them not to, but it's not really a problem because uh, there is a lot of hardware today um, supporting NDI, which can be positioned between the output of the computer and the, and the projector, or even the projector can be supporting NDI, so this will solve the problem. It's only a matter of money. <laughs> I've heard that before. <laughs> um, anyway, thanks for your presentation, Jack. Okay. And uh, thanks for coming back after all these years. Yeah, it's good I'm to glad see to you back. So for those of you who don't know, Jack was with the OpenCast Motorhome project right there from the start in 2008, 2009 and hasn't been here for quite a while. Thanks, um, before you enjoy your coffee,